Carl and TJ, the founders of Cross Colors. Definitely an honor to have you guys here. Ah, uh, thank you for inviting us. Uh, really thank appreciate you. it. Absolutely, um, I've definitely been a long time fan of, of what you guys have have built, as well as the effects that you guys, uh, you know, have established with with your products. So, definitely thrilled to have you guys on here. So, let's go ahead and start in the beginning. Um, what were you guys doing before Cross Colors? We were actually working on um, a clothing line um, that uh, was also created by Carl Jones. Yeah, it was. Prior a, to that. Yeah, it, yeah. Um, you know we're we're garment guys. Uh, I started uh, from fashion school. Uh, I started as a graphic artist slash printer. Was really um, influenced by. Um, what I learned in school about color, color theory, screen printing, and uh, so when I when I finished school, I opened up a screen printing studio, and I did T-shirt graphics for the industry. Uh, in those days, there was you know Guess was starting and various other companies. So I ran around uh, downtown LA to get work from these companies that were in business who needed graphics or did graphics, showed them what I did, sold some, printed some. Um, and from that, I learned the timing of the industry. Mm -hmm. You know, seasons, timing, deadline, how important it was uh, to be on time, to be accurate, to be right the first time, because people just didn't have time to, sure. you know, if they liked you and what you did, they liked it and they bought it. Um, it's interesting that you mentioned guests because I remember right around the time that you guys were launching, Guess was kind of becoming kind of a hip hop brand. I remember the overalls. Right. The Guess overalls were a very hip hop thing to wear right. during that time. Well, but that at that time, hip hop wasn't used as a clothing trend, look, style, anything. It was just Guess brand and Oh, uh, minorities, the urban market, black people, the ethnic brown market. people, the et whatever, you know, it was called so many different things except what it really was, um, bought the brand. So it was a cool brand in the neighborhood to wear. Yep. Now, TJ, you actually grew up in Mississippi. Oh, you found that out. I found that out. Yeah. But what made you pack up your car and, and drive to L.A.? Well, I, um, after I finished my degree, I went to school in uh, northern Mississippi, got my bachelor's degree, and then I went to Louisiana Tech and got my master's mm. in graphic design and illustration, actually. Okay. I came out here with the intent of doing fashion illustration. That was what I was going to do. And I had two options. I was going to go to New York, but that was too cold. So I decided I would come to L.A. Okay. Um, and I came out here because of the opportunity. You know, in Mississippi, there weren't many jobs for illustrators yeah. or even fashion related jobs. So I came out here and, um, and thought I was going to be an illustrator and found out quickly that wasn't going to work. Really? So I had to change, switch gears. Okay. So with that, then that's when I actually met Carl. Well, I heard that, you know, before you started making money out here in LA, you were actually sleeping in your car. I was. I was. I was actually sleeping in my car when I met Carl. Really? Yeah, actually when I uh, applied for the job at his company. Because at that time, Carl had a screen printing company, mm -hmm. uh, designing screen printing. And he was doing printing for the uh, industry, for the clothing industry, uh, screen printing. And he would have artists actually do comp work to actually take to the client to secure work, mm -hmm. to get print jobs, basically. But then Carl realized after a while that that was a lucrative well, it, it, it was a, you know, it was a great business and a great place to start, but I realized that the guys I was working for were doing really well as uh, garment manufacturers. So I, I started my first brand. It was called, and at the time, Beachwear was big. Mm -hmm. uh, Quicksilver, Town and Country. Yeah. Uh, that, was, that was streetwear then. Yeah. Beachwear right. was streetwear. So I really... You know, I was into it, and I, I'm, you know, I'm printing, and I, I knew how to make patterns, and I, and, and the guys I worked for, and printed for, 
and ran around the city for were doing great. I mean, they were making millions of dollars. And uh, I just thought I could make, I could do better. You know, it was, I was a screen printer. Margins were tough. You know, you make a few mistakes. They charge you back, right. this kind of thing. So I said, well, if they're doing it, I can do it. So I came up with this brand called Sir Fetish. Mm -hmm. First year we shipped $9 million. Wow. At that time. At that time. Yeah, right. Was right. $9 million dollars was... 20 million now? <laughs> Maybe 30 20 million. million. Yeah, right. Uh, that was a lot of money from a guy who was killing himself downtown, working very hard, you know, uh, sometimes we ran two shifts. I'd stay both both shifts, and uh, you know, over, to oversee my production. And at the end of the year, I think I was making thirty thousand dollars. You know, I looked at the numbers and I'm like, <laughs> I killed myself this year, and I made thirty grand. <laughs> right. And uh, so, you know, that first year at Surf Fetish, I remember I had a couple partners that I brought in who really understood manufacturing, buying a fabric. I learned a lot from those guys, too. French Moroccan Jews. <laughs> they were tough. I learned everything from them. And uh, we got along great. It was like a family. And the first year in 80, what year was that? 83, 84? No, it was actually in 86 or 87. No, but that wasn't. Okay, we started. But I think in. Because I came out in 85. You came out in 85. Mm -hmm. But we were already going we're already the business was running and you came in and but okay maybe it was 85 86 mm -hmm. i got a check for seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars mm -hmm. during that time right uh, you know everything changed and uh so you know i met tj he came out in his car he didn't say he was sleeping in his car he didn't say anything he just came in, in and brought his portfolio and we're like His work. I mean, it was the best from a, you know, a f uh, and at the time there were no computers or anything. It was all hand drawn. Mm -hmm. And it was some of the best art, you know, versus looking at a book from Salvador Dali or Picasso. I mean, his, his work, his artwork was something I had never seen before. So okay. we hired him. I think we paid him minimum wage at the time. It was minimum wage. TJ, you joined Sir Fetish. Yes. As an employee? Yes. Actually, it was designer screen printing originally. Uh -huh. The screen printing company, I joined that company as an employee. Okay. Okay. And then worked as an employee still with Sir Fetish mm -hmm. when it was started with the company doing the graphics. So I did a lot of the art that actually went into the actual clothes. Okay. Because it was basically made up of artwork that was actually printed on three items for the most part. A camp shirt, which is buttoned up a t-shirt, and a short, which hmm. were all coordinated. Gotcha. Yeah. So what happened with Surf Fetish? Um, Surf Fetish did well for really strong for three years. Yes. And, uh, you know, and then from that, you know, other private label came to the company because we were still, we still owned a screen printing company and all of a sudden we had a manufacturing company right. uh, called Surf Fetish. So it was two separate companies. We were still running both companies, but we stopped uh, performing or doing screen printing for for outsiders or other companies because we were so busy with with our own printing that there was just not time or energy or room or even yeah time yeah <laughs> so um, we were running both companies other private label came in but during that time um, a sales guy came in with a piece of fabric and it was a piece of fabric from Senegal. I think it was. Mm -hmm. And it was an African piece of fabric. And he goes, Carl, you're the only brother I know in this industry. You got to, and he was black, right? Mm -hmm. It was Randy Boykin. I'll never forget his yeah. name. He said, do something with this fabric. You got to do something with this fabric. I'm telling you. That. So, you know, I think I sat the fabric on my desk for a few days and I thought about it. When did I show it to you? Or did I ever show it to you? You showed it to me because you, we did boards and things like that. Oh, okay. And we thought about it and uh, we talked about it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I was, a, I was an officer in this, in this company. So um, basically one day 
when TJ and I um, decided this is a vi in our heads, this is a viable idea. Why don't we do something with this, right? Mm -hmm. I resigned from a company that I was doing well. I bought my first house, you know, I had nice cars. I, and I, and sometime I remember afterwards, I'm like, was I freaking crazy? <laughs> <laughs> what was I thinking? You know? And your collection of motorcycles. I had, a, I had you know, a few Harley Davidsons, you know. Okay. I was doing well and I had great partners. Mm -hmm. They were great, they were good to me. Uh, we were, like I said, like a family. We lived down the street from each other. Um, I mean, it was my family. And I just said one day, you know what? There's, there's something else I wanna do. Even though you were an owner of Surf Fetish, you, That's weren't, you weren't an employee there. You were. I was an owner. owner. I was a partner. Yeah. I, I was an equal partner. Yeah. Of the brand, and actually, it was uh, three of us. So we we split the pie up three ways. Right. And um, it was great, great people. And I just, I don't know. I TJ and I decided this is where it's at. I mean, th this is where it's going, or this is where it will go. Well, why, why couldn't it go there as Sir Fetish? Why can't Sir Fetish have like a, a think, separate line to do this type of stuff? I think I talked to them about it. You did. You, you know, be, it. You know, being my family and everything. And they said, I think you're nuts. It'll never work. <laughs> they that's didn't how, understand the that's how, it don't, That'll never work. That's what they told me. Okay. And uh, I said, I thought about it. I mean, it took, it was a process of probably a month back and forth in my head and thoughts and conversations with TJ. And we just, you know what? Either we're gonna do it or we're not. And I said, okay, we're gonna do it. And I did it and I resigned and I, you know, I was an officer of the corporation. So I, legally I couldn't really take anything. I picked up my briefcase. At that time I had a briefcase. Well, you didn't, uh, you didn't sell your third of the company well, back to them? Well, it was a family relationship and I said to them, Look, when you guys figure out what my portion is worth, send me a check. <laughs> I'm out. Did you ever get that check? Still waiting for that still check. Still waiting for that check. Still waiting for that check. 30 years later? 30, so. Yeah, still waiting for that check. <laughs> exactly. And I thought, you know. That's family. I would, you know. <laughs> That's how family was, does you. Huh? It was, yeah, it was stressful starting a new business, you know, because um, it's like starting all over again. And I worked pretty hard to get to that point. Gucci's absolutely the boogeyman of hip hop. Like it's just certain individuals, you just know that at any given moment, it could go left. Right. Gucci's one of them, T.I.'s one of them. I told y'all that before. I don't know why y'all keep acting like T.I. ain't Gucci level crazy. <laughs> Uh, T.I. is Gucci, Gucci level crazy. Gucci might be T.I. level crazy. You, you mean to tell me that if I walked up to your mother right in front of you and shot her in the face, yeah. and then I, I left the country and you could never, you can't get to me, you Hell wouldn't no. tell the police? Hell no, nah, I'm, I'm I'm, where your mama stay at? <laughs> <laughs>